Hello, welcome to You Might Be a Monster. Another story, another, 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 another,
<laughs> no pencil, just forehead. It's straight. <laughs> I do that, I think I lose brain cells. That's why it sounds so hollow in there. <clears throat> that's why I never, yeah, that's why I never get mad at anybody because if I want to give, give them a piece of my mind, well, it could be my last piece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there it goes. So I, I was actually almost, uh, well, I was attacked by a mugger uh, last week. Yeah, I know, and it, but he didn't get to me all the way. This, actually, this woman came out of nowhere and she knocked the mugger down to the ground and then she handcuffs him. So I figure, hey, she must be like an undercover cop. So, so I ask her, hey, are you with the SFPD? And she goes, uh, no, uh, BDSM. It's a fetish. <laughs> yeah, so we dated. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember coming home one day, there she is wearing nothing but a Freudian slip. <laughs> and, uh, <ooh. laughs> yeah, we used to like to play in phone sex. Yeah, she would get like one phone, tie uh, the end of one, the phone cord around her ankle, the other end, she'd uh, hammer against the wall. And then she'd curl up like a telephone and she'd go, push my buttons, push my buttons. <laughs> yeah, she really liked it when I pressed the redial. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Other stuff. Uh, okay, let's see. You know this? Name this tune. Jeopardy. Wheel of Fortune. Jeopardy. Okay, Jeopardy. Everyone else. Uh, yeah, the only person left was this wonder, was this woman dressed as Wonder Woman, and I go up to her and say, "Hey there, Wonder Bun Woman, <clears throat> want to come over to my place and check out my comic book collection? I got a lot of issues." <laughs> yeah, yeah. She goes, "Get lost, you nerd!" And I told her, "I can't get lost because I got my address written in my underwear." So. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, one more other thing. Oh, uh, you know, people always tell me, hey, Blinky, how come you're always happy and smiling? No, don't you do drugs or something? You go, no, no, I, nothing like that. I, I rely on something more natural. It's called uh, denial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, denial gets a bad rap, but yeah, actually, denial, denial is a good thing. It's what helps us avoid reality while still being a contributing member of society. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, a little, another word of wisdom. Never play pin the tail on on the donkey next to an open window. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh anyway, <laughs> yes. Hey, <Ooh>. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Well, before I get off uh, the stage, um, <clears throat> just want to let you know, I'm also available for birthdays. Janine, my birthday, 50 years old. Yay! Bar mitzvahs? Any bar You made it. She's getting it. I'm 29. Halfway in the hundred. I'm also available for weddings. Okay, thank you. That's my time. Thank you. Here? Yes. Am, am I in good company? I need to be in good company. Yes. Well, first, uh, first, hold on. I got. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, there are two rules tonight for um, for listening to this book. Okay. The first one is uh, if you like something, you must roar. <laughs> Thank you. And, and if you don't like something, you must roar extra loud. <laughs> Because monsters don't like things uh, more often than not. You know, we're kind of a, a half-empty kind of bunch, right? No. The um, princess is usually half-full. Um, so, okay. So, uh, first I have to start with a message from the worm. That's me. <clears throat> this book is not meant to be read in the daytime, before bedtime, or any time, actually. It uh, especially shouldn't be written, uh, read after uh, eating pizza or ice cream. 
as I hope you haven't eaten pizza or ice cream recently or in the past month. You have? Who has? You, you, you there with the ears? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, then we'll just have to take our chances. So, do not read this book to, um, um, Critters. what was that? Pitters. Pitters? Pitters. Pitters! Yes, do not read your book to Pitters. <laughs> yes. Yeah, or, um, three or more bears. Yes, yes, you, you slow it down. Pitters. Three or more bears. Yes, bears prefer to hear stories about porridge that is just the right temperature and become angry easily. There is no mention of porridge here, so do not read them this book. Scientists have found that reading this book will make your pee turn yellow. Oh, God. Yes. Who has uh, yellow pee? Me. Anyone? Me. You? Roar. Uh, Roar. Uh, yeah, keep, keep the pee to yourself. Okay, so uh, many of the stories in this book rhyme. I'm not going to tell you which ones, because reading them out loud may cause your tongue to stretch into unusual shapes like a balloon. For this reason, after reading, it is um, best that you avoid party clowns, especially zombie party clowns, uh, which we'll talk about later. Inside this book, you will not find fairy tale princesses who trade frog kisses for wishes. That's just gross on many levels. There are no happy dishes with legs running away with spoons either. Dishes with legs. That's just dumb. Originally, there was a story in this book about a cute kitten that liked to hug everyone, eat all his vegetables, and carry his toys in a briefcase. But those types of stories are for baby sisters and school teachers who wear ugly shoes. So we removed it. This book is filled with not-so-scary monsters who refuse to write love poems, not-so-smart children, very mean flowers, cactus hugs, and a boy who is often mistaken as a hamster. You may not like these stories, but what did you expect from a book written by a worm? Okay, so are, are, are you folks ready for the first story? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay, and, and the French? The French rock? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the first story is, uh, it's a story, uh, well, it's about socks, and uh, you'd think that a worm like me wouldn't know anything about socks, right? Well, well, what you call a sock, I call a sleeping bag. Okay, Let, let's give it up for um, our, our, our first victim, I mean, uh, presenter. Rawr! Help! I'm a sock magnet. They follow me around. They cling to my body. And they pounce from the ground. They cling like vampire leeches. Smell that old nacho cheese. The reeking odor is most awful, and even the slight, slightest breeze. It's impossible to shake them, even when they make me sneeze. <laughs> I'm a sock covered body from my stinky sock covered head to my stinky sock covered knees. Each year, a few socks went missing, but I'm the best hope they've ever had. Now I'm a moving, talking heap of striped dog guard and nice shot. Check good play. <laughs> <laughs> the worst you've heard my story, ten more have joined their friends. <laughs> totally two hundred tubes of awful, evil, uh, medieval rayon cotton blends. Now even on this deserted island, there's no escaping their elastic hold. I'm trapped forever in a stock prison with no hope for early parole. And yet, if I must be honest, and the truth must be told, I wouldn't mind so much if, I, if my feet weren't so awful cold. Oh, my bare feet. You were supposed to ball them up. <laughs> Very good job, very good job. That's exactly, yes. Yes, exactly, sir. You there with the ears and the eyes. Yes, I see you. Yes. Okay, so uh, the next one, uh, this is going to get progressively more um, raw. Okay. Okay, so the, 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 uh, the, the next uh, presenter... Well, he, we, it's a, he's a very special guy. He is a, he's the presidential lagomorph. 
and he's going to give us a mathematical uh, lesson. Are you are you ready? <laughs> So sorry to interrupt you. I couldn't wait till you were done. I just had to tell each and everybody that I can count to one. I'm a legendary number counter made famous for my smarty tune. Not telling you how great I am would be most absolutely rude. Sure. I need to use my fingers, and sometimes ask for clues. What needs to be dramatic for an audience made up the likes of you. Please accept my invitation, but come appropriately dressed. You can watch me on this high chair, and I'll let you be impressed. I hear there may be other numbers. That's impossible, absurd, untrue. All this world needs is one. Since I cannot count to two. <laughs> I would vote for him. Yes. Yes, because I can only count the wo. Okay. All right. So um, next time, next we have kind of a, what? Rooms don't have ears. What? Well, we don't have teeth either. But you know, come on. <laughs> Dude. Sometimes I bite me. Uh, okay. <laughs> I get it. I get it. That's good. Okay. So um, uh, the the next story we have is a, is a very special one. It's it's uh, it, we have a visitor way uh, who's come all the way from Wa uh, Wally's Water Well. Have you been there? Mm. Just check your Google <laughs> map. Find it. Awesome place. Little stinky. Okay, so uh, let's let's bring out uh, Glenn the flower, everybody. Glenn the flower. Yeah. Give it up. Give it up. In a far off valley, just past Clutzy Falls by Wally's water well, there was a farm quite normal, at least it seemed so, by the smell. A hundred of the best seeds imported from the finest flower patches were lovingly planted by Miss Farmer there in perfect 10 by 10 batches. Miss Farmer with love covered 100 in manure and watered them. She bound and planted an extra tiny seed, which we'll just call Glenn. You're a weirdo. <laughs> oh, go. You're a weirdo, oh, For the reindeer, said the owl. Eating a worm. You mustn't listen to them. The first rain came, and soon after, a hundred flowers sprouted and grew. But Glenn still stayed the same, except his petals, which turned a royal blue. When the spring comes, you won't bloom. They laughed and laughed at him. You look like a baby in that giant pot. Even the clouds were mean to tiny Glenn. Not only that, said worker drone number seven, but no bee will pollinate a small stem, tiny blue flower, who doesn't even smell so great. Perhaps these leaves are causing the problem. I know now what I must do. Next time, I'll keep them up high, and more water will come through. Rain came, and a hundred flowers grew taller from the water that they drank. But poor Glenn, he was smaller. Could it be that Glenn actually shrank? Soon, Mon, there'll be a monsoon, a weed named Wayne forewarned. The bees went to the hives to hide as the darkest storm clouds formed. Water drizzled, then rain, then began to pour, then turned into hail. The well broke, Glenn pushed and stretched, all his feeble attempts failed. With one last push, he heard a crack, and out popped two of the strongest, longest, most impressive roots. 
which, while not seen all the while, must have been growing underneath all the dirt in his pot without anyone ever knowing. The valley flooded, the owl flew away as the raging waters began to rise. The broken well sent a wave which Glen rode in his pot, waving goodbye to blooming mean flowers, rude bumblebees, and clouds with bad attitudes. And finding dry land, Glenn used his brand new root legs to walk upright onto. It's not where you're from, but where you're at! Glenn the flower exclaimed, safe and sound. Glenn took to higher ground, where he has always since remained. Where's the where's the where's the umnats? Where's the where's the uh, juxtaposition of you know art and life? Where is it? I, I don't see it at all. You know I think what we need here is a better accent, and then after that I think we need a cabaret of performers. You know something that'll be a little mysterious but short and kind of uh, I don't know avant garde if you know what I mean. Okay, uh, let's give a good roar for that. Why don't you ready? Wow. Ah! I'm not really a hamster. Although sunflower seeds are great, and that wheel back there is a whole lot of fun. Now, what's that over there, you might ask? It's my water bottle. I love it. I love being able to drink from it that way. Makes it much more easier. <laughs> 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 What's that sound? What's that sound? What's that sound you might say? <laughs> Don't mind me. I just really love sunflower seeds. <laughs> and don't laugh at me! Don't laugh the way my the sunflower seeds make my cheek's so huge! <laughs> <laughs> Let me just wash my face then. Wash my human, human face. Hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Celebrating a half birthday or a B minus on your latest mathematics tests, <laughs> then gray balloons are the sometimes, sort of, perhaps kind of best. <laughs> but don't get too excited because each one is plain, dull, gray. Buy two for the price of two. <laughs> and I'll throw in none today. Here you go, birthday girl. Whoops. <laughs> they really are extraordinary. I I mean I mean um, extra or denary. <laughs> a dozen won't add to the fun. In fact, they make every party unnecessary. Blah, blah. <sighs> what are you people doing here? Hi. Oh, um. Hi. So, uh, yeah, they won't even float away. Each one is filled with lukewarm air. So, um, yeah, buy a gray balloon today, or Don, I couldn't really care. <laughs> ah! Brought to you by gray balloons. Gray balloons, everybody, gray balloons. Ah! Yes, yes. So I think we need um, a, a chewy, um, high fructose laden snack, everybody. Um, so, uh, what's, what's, what's your favorite uh, flavor of gun that, gum there, sir? Licorice. Li licorice flavor? Yeah. Right, how, how old are you? <laughs> um, 29. Six years old. Re oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, my fla favorite flavor is dirt. Yes, dirt. And uh, anyways, we, I have brought a, um, a guest here who uh, is an expert on uh, bubble gum. And uh, he uh, will explain himself, rightfully so. Give it up for um, Bubblegum Tree, everybody. Rawr! Hi. 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 Won't you make a gumball from my Bubblegum Tree? There's so many to choose from, and they're entirely free. Sure, Razzle Plum is tasty, as is the spearmint tea. But my fat tapioca is better. Have you tried the split pea? But I suggest the mud pie. Flavored garbage bonzo bean. Or diet greenberry chipotle. Perhaps Zen theme number 13? No? Okay. What if I told you a secret? Would you then take a gumball from my tree and chew it, my friend? You will? <laughs> that's fantastic! <laughs> I mean, that's just great. <laughs> Looks like you picked a good one. Go on, chew it. I'll wait. <gasps> yes, chewing gum can be fun. But there's a hidden danger. Other than rotting your teeth or annoying a stranger. You must know what you can eat and what you can chew. Enjoying gum is serious business. Here's a rule. Or two. If your gum has gone bland, be polite, don't leave it behind. Don't leave your chewed up gum on the sidewalk for someone else to find. <laughs> Such a horrible habit is nasty, it's shameful and really gross. <laughs> but there's a more important rule to remember. Now listen close, Rihanna. <laughs> Here's the golden rule of gum that should always be followed. 
no matter how tempting gum, should never ever be swallowed. <laughs> the next day you might say that rule of his was kind of dumb. It was only a tiny, minuscule piece of harmless bubble gum. But in two days later, take a close look in a mirror and you'll see the smallest sprout in your mouth, slowly growing right into a tree. <laughs> and that's not all that gets worse. There's more you need to know. While there's gum to be baked, your gum tree will continue to grow. I almost forgot. How's your gum? Doesn't it taste like more? <laughs> Take another gumball! Maybe two. Maybe 354. <laughs> One gumball just won't do. Here! Do me this tiny favor. Pick from the gumball tree at least one more horrible flavor. <laughs> then someday I will be normal and not have to constantly view this gigantic bubblegum tree which that gumball grew into. Why bother? I'll just eat it. I should have known better. <laughs> Chewing gum can be fun. Unless it lasts forever. <laughs> and <Yeah>. ever. <laughs> <laughs> For children, hold on one second. Thank you. Every story for children, every book needs a, a bedtime story. Every award-winning book like mine needs a, a good bedtime story. So today um, we're going to test out my um, award-winning book story on um, this uh, this um, lamb. Uh, I mean, what? I'm a sheep. Oh, okay. So uh, yes, this sheep. Okay. Uh, sheeps are kind of, cool. well, symbols of sleep. Huh. Okay. Are you, are, are you guys ready? Yeah. Rawr. Rawr. You feel me with your rars. Okay. <clears throat> Why are you up after bedtime, little sheep? Can I read you a story to help you fall asleep? It's a very thick book with most helpful advice. A lullaby to help a sheep sleep soundly at night. So clear your mind, sheep, and you'll catch some Z's. Think of cookie crumbs eaten by millions of fleas. Why are you tossing and turning? Please listen, don't scratch. Can you imagine what isn't under a pirate's eye patch? And if pirates don't happen to make your spine shudder, imagine all the beasts we have yet to discover. Like the creatures that make creaking sounds only at night by walking in the shadows on tiptoes, avoiding the light. Did that new lump there move inside of your pillow? Is that a party of bedbugs or a nearsighted armadillo? She looks rather tired, like my arm. But look, she's discovered that your bed could be a great nest if you'd just lift up the covers. Oh, the night sky is huge. It's so pretty, however. Did you know that outer space goes on and on forever? <laughs> the world keeps rotating and we're but grains of sand and you're the tiniest sheep who can hardly stand but not to worry there's so many things that you forgot to do like take out the trash and turn off the stew and finish your homework and do all your chores and it's almost it's almost morning it's almost uh, four it's getting late sheep you have to get up early tomorrow won't wait go to sleep in a hurry the clock is tick-tocking and never rewinds. Keep tossing and turning, and tomorrow you'll find that sleep is important, sheep! It's important! Tomorrow you'll have to learn! You need sleep to be awake! Wait! Said sleepy sheep. Now it's my turn. If your book is so great, then why don't you try it? Your advice is bad! <laughs> what I need is some quiet. Leave my room at once, Worm, or else uh, uh, let me be, uh, uh, before I count, to one, two, three. And, <laughs> and as I left, <laughs> placing my best-selling book on the shelf, Little Sleep was asleep, because Little Sleep, sheep, counted herself. Thank you. Ah! Okay, now, this next one's a little bit scarier. 
I have to admit. It's a little bit scary. It's about zombie clowns. Yes, zombie clowns. Yes, yes, zombie clowns. But um, not to worry, because zombie clowns only eat people with brains. So you're good. Um, so uh, so, so uh, it's, since it's scarier, you know what we do when uh, things are a little bit scarier? Run right away. No we, no, we lean in. Okay? So lean in and get ready for Dr. Hal and Yay. Clown Graveyard. <laughs> Roar! <laughs> Outside town, just past city limits, there's a graveyard that I found. Underneath the greenest grass, beneath the dirty graveyard mound, you'll find zombie balloon dogs barking the cutest squeaky sounds. Bite, 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 bite. Inside brightly colored coffins, next to smiling zombie clouds. <laughs> Once a year, around your birthday, they crawl out from crusty earth. Drooling with excitement. To celebrate <laughs> your birth. They'll bake you a fresh skull cake and pile into a tiny hearse, repeating the same lame jokes forever with their eternal curse. They advertise in the paper until your mom calls on the phone. Hmm. They knock upon the door and juggle, singing a song called no. Eating brains with gaping mouths. Zombies have never been polite. Their balloon dogs won't play dead, but instead fetch femur bones to bite. So if you hear a knock, honk, thump, and a squeak when you're alone, pretend it's not your birthday and that there's nobody at home. Be sure to smile at their boring tricks. If you dare to let them in your door, remember zombie clowns are harmless unless you fail to cheer for more. Give it up a zombie clown. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, hold on. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, fairy tale hotline. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Calm down. Calm down. Yeah. Who's this? Tree pigs. What's a tree pig? <laughs> oh, uh, oh. You said three pigs. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 hard to hear you. No, calm down. There's a uh, it's a lot of background noise. Yeah, it's kind of like heavy breathing. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, a, a wolf. Oh yeah, a, a wolf is blowing down your house. Yeah, right. So um, let me get this straight. Yeah. You you made a house out of straw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, who makes a house out of straw? Oh, oh, this has happened before. Yeah, first first straw, then sticks, then then bricks. Real, real lazy lazy, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, what? No, no, slow down. Okay, all right, here's my solution. All right, get together. Yeah, all, all, all three of you. Yeah, get me off speakerphone. Yes. Okay, now um, gather together. Get one, make one house, okay? And, uh, and, and this time, make a house out of wolves. Okay, thanks. Okay. I'm back, thank you. So, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is a little, yeah, this is kind of like a, a tombstone, but it's a chair. It, it's um, symbolic that way. Um, and I live in it, and it smells a little funny sometimes. Okay, so uh, to right now we have our last story. Yes, our last story. It's our uh, feature presentation. Yes. Yes, it's called, it's the titular story, yes, which means it's the same one, and as the book cover, and it is called, You Might Be a Monster. Give it up for, You Might Be a Monster! Ah! I'm a monster, a monster, I growled the worst awful sound, then jumped on my, on my bed, turned garbage mound. And when I colored my sister Harriet's head green by replacing her shampoo with army camouflage cream, I shouted, I'm a monster, a monster! I rampage and eat. My order was my super sworn enemy that I had to defeat. But my parents didn't listen. 
And they grounded me good, like good moms and dads to bad children should. I needed to convince them to transform complete, so it painted my face blue and glued claws to my feet. Grabbing Harriet's stuffed dragon, I ripped off its tail and attached it with string before starting to wail, exposing my teeth, which I polished to a monstrous gleam. Our house was a playground for me to demolish. Our Gustav's so honest. Whoops. <laughs> Innocent, you mean, Mom? Innocent. <laughs> Our Gustav's so innocent. <laughs> My parents refused to believe. Our Gustav wouldn't hide such a hard lie of his sleeve. I'm a monster, I tell you. I growled as I chewed up the new sofa's pillows as if they were food. Oh, gosh, maybe he's right. Get the phone book at once. Turn on the porch light before our Gustav delight turns into a full-blown monster tonight. Not five minutes later, I heard screeching truck wheels. Just like that! <laughs> a knock on the door, and the odd stomp of tiny boot heels. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> in walked the strangest oblong-faced man with giant trifocals, extra-large clipboard in hand. His tool belt carried bizarre scientific contraptions, macroscopic <laughs> tweezers with kung fu grip action. There were chopsticks and rulers and uh, and beeping devices sporting comfort fit handles tagged with discounted prices. You must be the specimen or rather, Gustav Delight, who has made this house a toxic waste site. Your parents have acquired my services for a maximum age to see if you're truly a monster. He sneered, in need of a cage. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long have you been a monster, my little specimen G? It started slowly, I growled. But I'm 100% monster now, see? Well, it appears you seem quite monstrous <laughs> upon first inspection. But I shan't know the truth, he smiled wide, without further deception. <laughs> On first glance, you seem but a child with a tail-making ugly sight. But this checklist and this panel of experts of mine will <laughs> see if something is truly not right. It is best to be made for rude children in shoddy costumes who pretend to be monsters to avoid cleaning their room. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you chew with your both mouths open? <clears throat> uh, now let me see. Are there 100 empty tooth sockets where 100 teeth used to be? Do you have eyeballs in places where one shouldn't look? Are all your friends villains from dusty fairy tale books? <laughs> <laughs> Climbing your nose hairs to rescue uh, princesses. <sighs> Do your boulder earrings match your Christmas tree dresses? Do you fluff clouds for pillows and play with roller coasters? Or use humpies for skates and volcanoes for toasters? <laughs> <coughs> Does your breath sit off fire alarms? Sing the tow hairs of neighbors? Do your daydreams make headlines in the weekly newspapers? <laughs> Speaking of hair, does it grow in not so funny places? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, is your tongue tied like messy shoelaces? Yeah. Do your earlobes hang down like those twin floating faces? 
Do you play baseball with bass who steal all your laces? <laughs> yeah, do your internal organs glow in the dark? A weird putrid yellow, like chunks of rancid fruit cocktail suspended in jello? <laughs> Is your height full of holes like moldy Swiss cheeses? Have your dance moves caused earthquakes? Don't say earthquakes. Earthquakes? <laughs> Hello? Everybody got their preparedness kit? Have your dance moves caused earthquakes? Preparedness kit! <laughs> Tidal wool. Tidal waves when you sneeze. Yes, yes, I shouted. I'm horrible. It's all true. But I can't help it. It's my nature. Shit's what monsters do. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the truth, then write a blue face and this ridiculous tale. I believe you're just a rude kid whose manners have failed. I wiped off the face paint and tried to unfasten the tail, but the belt buckle just tightened, making it hard to exhale. This turned my face greener as I struggled, making me seem much more of a monster. Growl, growl, I growled, trying to scream. Experts' contractions lit up and started frenetically flashing, and I rolled on the floor, kicking my feet, my teeth gnashing. It's your actions, not your words, that give your monstrousness a value. <laughs> oh, I have come to the conclusion that you truly are a monster. Great A. <laughs> he presented a mirror, and I was aghast at what I'd become. I, Gustav, was truly a monster. Supremely scary. Second to none. And now I travel the world. This very nice cage, stomping for crowds who point and clap for me on stage. But I wish I could turn back the clock and remind the rude version of me to, to mind my manners next time. So, parents, if your young one is acting horribly meanish, wrecking the house, or even looking slightly greenish, on the back of this book, you shall happily discover, wait for it. Oh. <laughs> 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 ah, look how delightful it is. In the back of this book, happily discover a business card hidden inside this back cover. It provides a discount and a warranty worldwide for each nervous president parent whose child is a monster inside. <laughs> Children, I warn you to be careful and avoid excuses and lies, for there's always a cage right next to me. It's just about your size. You should be ashamed for reading a book with a horrible cover that makes hats fall off. <laughs> it's such a horrible ending. Why did you come to such a show? Well, if you are, when you turn the, the, the book inside out, what the hell's going on? <laughs> just go with it, man. You'll know that you can read it again, and again, and again! Thank you very much! Ah! Thank you!